Okay, so we'll go back to another video. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a different outline. Usually, um, in long-time fans, I usually like to present cool problems to solve for fun, but this is going to take a little bit in a turn of a lectural video. Um, and I feel like this topic specifically doesn't get as much shine or attention. Um, the example specifically that I know that everybody has at least seen like many, many times, the one example that will be covered in this video, but as the topic itself, and we'll be investigating through other examples, I feel like that's worth, um, you know, investigating as well. So what we have, we're looking at is mathematical fallacies. To start off, what defines of math, a math fallacy? Well, it's, um, it's an instance of improper reasoning slash deduction that leads to um, an unexpected result that is actually deemed to be, you know, false or, you know, just plain absurd. And traditionally, they're actually presented to, um, they're pre presented by giving some sort of invalid step slash deduction that is actually mixed in between with the um, valid steps within your argument. That's actually, um, in a sense, that it's a, a clever way of um, some sort of like deception or concealment. Um, the meaning of the fallacy here is actually slightly different than it is, um, you know, with a logical fallacy. And math fallacy specifically actually covers, well, I wouldn't say really cover exactly, but it exists in like many branch of mathematics. And we're actually going to go over a bunch of these examples. Um, so anyway, I'll add a little more to it in just a sec before we begin to the, you know, the examples, but let's actually just um, go into a little more detail. So there's some distinction between um, a simple mistake and a math fallacy for one a simple mistake in a proof leads to, you know, an invalid proof. As far as, you know, math fallacies exist, um, there's some, as mentioned, there's actually some um, elements, some sort of element of deception in the um, presentation of the proof. So it's, um, it's clever in other words. So you might think it looks like this is a valid proof, but there's something in there that actually does not like work out just correct as said, the examples will fall by. And this fails for, the valid validity fail specifically is attributed to more towards the division by zero, and it's hidden somewhere in some sort of algebraic notation. I'm sure a lot of you guys would know what the example I'm gonna cover specifically um, where we're going towards for. So the examples that we are going to look at, there's um, there's a nickname to this, it's called the Howlers. Howlers is basically a way of saying um, these are mathematically um, correct results. However, they're actually derived in an incorrect, uh, with incorrect lines of reasoning. So if you want to put it this way, you could think of it like the meme, that pirate meme of the, well, yes, but actually no, or the other one with the speechless stick guy meme who puts his finger up, tries to say something, but actually puts his finger down. You could think of it in that like sort of, you know, analogy, that example. Um, so we'll actually cover um, this example first, and then I'll move on to each example one at a time. And before I go forward, if there's any other, you know, um, math fallacies that I may have um, missed slash covered that you think it's actually really cool, then, you know, feel free to put that down in the comments below. But let's actually start off with um, showing an example of a Howler's um, fallacy. So for example, Howler's fallacy, they suppose that if we have a uh, fraction 16 over 64, so one will use that incorrect line of reasoning to say that we can actually just cancel out the digit six on both the top and bottom, and indeed will lead to one over four, which mathematically that is correct, but it's not how, again, that's not how you're actually supposed to solve it. Of course, if you think that was the case, you'd think that you could actually do this for all fractions. However, uh, another case shows that 48 over 98, if you do that exact same method, this, um, that fraction is the same as Howler's uh, um, fallacy as well. Or another one, another Howler's um, fallacy, and this is um, due with anomalous cancellation, is that if we take a look at uh, specifically taking the derivative of one over x squared, one can see that, um, actually it's supposed to be one over x, one, one over x, then we see that one can actually just cancel out the d's, then move that x back into here. So then um, we have that this is actually just um, negative one over x squared since that um, we have that the, the fraction line over here is supposed to coincide with the negatives. But again, that does not work. <laughs> you don't you don't do that again with derivatives like this. It's actually um, a little bit weird to see it. At least from um, what I know, this is actually the um, the only calculus um, Howler's uh, fallacy example that I you know come across. If you see any more, if you see anything similar to this, then feel free to let me know. Mostly Howler's um, fallacy I see for the most part actually comes into the um, form of rational um, numbers being you know simplified with you know the whole canceling of digits, which of course does not work at all. 
So let's actually move on to another example. So an x division by zero. So obviously we know what that is. If um, we were to divide zero to both sides of some sort of equation, that's not possible to do that. Otherwise that'd be undefined for one. So I think we everybody knows um, what example I will be using in this um, division by zero fallacy. But for those who don't know, we're actually gonna show that the proof of um, one equals two is wrong and find where that fallacy exists. So for one, let's suppose that if A is equal to B, such that for um, A and B um, are not uh, zero, so they're not zero quantities, okay? So let's see, I'll multiply A to both sides. So I have A squared is equal to um, A times B. Then next, what I'll do is we'll actually subtract a B squared. So we have A squared minus B squared equals A um, times B, subtract B squared. Then next, I'll actually factor this out. This is clearly on the left-hand side. This is a difference of squares. So I have A plus B and then A minus B. Then I'll factor out the B from here. So it's going to be B multiplied by A subtract B. I can actually divide A minus B to both sides. So that gets rid of itself. So we have A plus B is equal to B. And notice that we have that A is equal to B. So we can actually put the substitution. So you can put B plus B is equal to B or A plus A is equal to A, however you want to. It's still um, equal to each other. So we have b plus b equal b, then that says that we have 2b is equal to b, then just divide the b to both sides, and we have that 2 is equal to 1 qed. So you, so you might be thinking, and I'm sure everybody knows this, but where does the fallacy exist? I mean, um, feel free to pause the video if you want to think about this for yourself. I'm actually just going to move on and give you the answer um, straight away. So the fallacy actually exists comes from this line of um, reasoning over here, specifically at the quantity of a subtract b. So why is that? Because notice that we have that A is equal to B. And so if we were to take the subtraction of the same quantity, we get that A minus B is actually supposed to equal zero. Hence, if we were to divide by both sides, just like what we see this um, absurd, the, um, the absurd step, then we have a division by zero, which, you know, unvalid. It's uh, um, undefined if you were to perform this method. So of course, this is where the fallacy exists. Let me actually just underline that and say, to um, clarify that fallacy exists at this line here. So A minus B is um, equal zero. I'll say this as absurd. So that's where it's at. So um, yeah, the most common um, division by zero um, fallacy example that um, I would say all mathematicians at least know of. So with that, let's actually move on to another example. So I think um, the next one we have analysis. I think this um, example is actually personally my favorite. And it's actually the first time that I've actually seen it when I first encounter it. But we know what mathematical analysis is, is uh, basically adult calculus. If we study the mathematical studies that change with limits and integrations, all that stuff. Why is this a fallacy? Well, if we were to ignore everything about differentials and integrals and all, um, all its properties, we can actually, um, there leads to some fallacy. The specific one we're going to show is that we can show that zero is equal to one using um, some analysis. So proof of um, zero is equal to one. Okay. So if we were to consider the following um, indefinite integral from, um, or not from because it's indefinite, of one divided by x ln of x dx, if we naively use integration by parts, so if um, we'll let u equals uh, one over ln of x, then we see that du is going to equal um, negative one divided by x times ln square of x and dx. And we choose our db, which is actually going to just be one over x and then dx, then just find the antiderivative. We know that that's actually just ln of x. And then we actually just combine with everything with the, um, the integration by parts formula, formula. So u times v subtract v times the integral of v dv. So for one, we're going to have that. This is just going to cancel. So I have one, then add this, well, subtract. But then we have um, v times du, that's a negative. So I'll put that as a plus. Then we have um, one x, one divided by x ln square of x multiplied by ln of x. The terms of the quantity of ln of x from the denominator cancel. So we're just left with one divided by x ln of x dx. So this is equal to this. Then I can actually just subtract the and um, the integral of both sides. And so we see that we can get that this is um, zeros equal to one. So where does the fallacy exist? Again, uh, feel free to pause the video if you want to um, figure this out. So the fallacy is that these anti the antiderivatives can only are only defined up to a constant. 
and shifting it up by one or any number is allowed. So the thing is that if we were to introduce um, the integration uh, limits to our or arbitrary integration limits A and B, and this will help fix this error, um, like so if we actually put A and B as our bounds, so A, B, one divided by X, ln of X, then DX, all right, then we see that um, we just performed the same thing over here. We get this integration by parts. So we have one evaluated from B to or A to B, and then plus the integral from A to B, and then X or one divided by X divided by ln of X DX. Then we know that um, if we if we calculate this, um, we know that the difference of you know constant values from um, some limit in between is actually just going to equal zero. So that's going to be zero over here. But then that would have to mean that we actually get the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, which is just, or I point the wrong line. The left-hand side over here is equal to the right-hand side. So that's actually valid. So of course, um, fixing this error has, um, will um, make, will turn things around if we introduce, you know, arbitrary integration limits. So now um, with this, let's actually move on to another example. So this is actually, I'll just um, say this, and this is actually the last, you know, real example and uh, there's a couple of tables followed with this specific subtopic of you know math fallacies um but i know that there's actually some fallacies existing within geometry and even proof by induction but i don't want to go too much into that for one i'm not really into the geometry fanatic like that and proof of induction is just another world of its own but um multi-value functions and this is actually the most common one in, in terms of you know topics and examples that anybody can uh, actually recognize from here so we know that multi-value functions that a lot of the functions they don't actually have unique inverses so for example there are two possible square roots of a positive number even when squaring um, a number gives a unique value and our value chosen is actually you know the principal value mainly um, for the non-negative value however um, in some situations we are not get we there is no guarantee to say that the square root um, given as the principal value of the square root of the um, square of a number will give the original value, um, i.g., you know, the principal square root of the square root of negative 2 is 2, for example. So uh, one way we'll look at this, one example we'll actually look at specifically, uh, we'll show that um, a fallacy can just lead to um, the proof of 5 is equal to 4 if we're actually not careful of how we handle um, the square roots. So. We have five is equal to four if we were to prove this. So let's start off by um, saying that we start with negative 20 on both sides of the equation. Then I can actually write this as 25 subtract 45 and then it's equal to uh, 16 minus 36. Then afterwards we can actually split this up a little bit better. So we have five square subtract five times nine is equal to four square uh, minus four times nine. Then what I'll do is I'll add an 81 over 4 to both sides. So 5 squared minus 5 times 9. Add this with 81 divided by 4 equals 4 squared minus 4 times 9. Add this with 81 over 4. Then we see that these are actually perfect squares. So we can actually write this as 5 squared or 5 minus 9 over 2 quantity squared is equal to 4 minus 9 divided by 2 quantity squared. Now, if I were to take the square root of both sides, um, the exponents will cancel. So I have 5 minus uh, 9 over 2 is equal to 4 minus 9 over 2. Add the 9 over 2 to both sides, and we see that we have that 5 is equal to 4. So where's that fallacy? I'll give you um, a couple seconds, or feel free to pause the video if you want to um, find fallacy. But the fallacy actually exists specifically, of course, as I mentioned at this line, since um, if we're not very, if we're not careful how we handle our um, the square root value, the square root you know, value, specifically a square a square equals b square has to imply that a is equal to b if a and b have the same signs. Otherwise, you could have results like a is equal to negative b or negative a is equal to b. Remember, we did with square roots there actually exists positive and negative, so it's how you handle it, treat it with care. But actually, if we were to fix this up for the second line, we can say that if we take the square root of both sides, we have that this is going to just lead with 5 minus 9 over 2. But um, on the other side, we'll say that this is actually negative times that quantity. So negative 4 minus 9 over 2. And now that what that implies afterward is that if you add 9 over 2 to both sides of the equation, we'll get that 5 is equal to 5. So again, square root values, uh, fallacies can lead to that with, if you're not um, handling this with care. So we'll go, um, we'll go over one more and then I'm just gonna um, call it off the video and 
So one more, so one more we're gonna do, and it's dealing specifically with the square roots of negative value. So we can there's, there's actually a um, fallacy with the proof of um, one is equal to negative one. And there's actually exists with dealing with complex exponents too, but um, I think those are too short. Even though those are um, interesting fallacies, but I want to cover like the big ones. <laughs> so one equals negative two. So if we were to prove this, we see that we have that one is equal to the square root of one which we say that we can write this as the square root of negative one then times negative one, split this as a product of the square root of negative one then times the square root of negative one. Let me actually uh, fix that notation up a little bit. Negative one, then we can say that uh, we know that negative one is in terms of imaginary unit, just lowercase i, then multiply by i. i times i is equal to an i squared, which we know that that's actually just going to equal negative one. So one is equal to negative one. That fallacy exists. In this, in this specific third equality, um, the square root of x times y equals square root of x times the square root of y. It's valid if um, at least one of x and y are not negative, if you're actually working in, you know, with real numbers. So again, how you handle this with care, you gotta treat with real numbers carefully, especially when dealing with, you know, complex numbers and square roots. Multi-value functions can lead to, you know, a lot of chaos if, you know, not handling things, you know, with care. So yeah, um, that's all the examples I want to cover. Again, I know that there's a geometry fallacy and the proof by induction um, fallacy that I didn't go over, but if there are any other fallacies out there that exist that um, you think it's actually worthwhile, then you know, feel free to comment down below if you want to. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.